an introduction to Course Compass. The math department has decided to use Pearson textbooks with MyMathLab access. Since 2001, 9 million students have used MyMathLab at 1,900 colleges. We chose this option in order to better serve our students, give immediate feedback, and allow more flexibility for our students and faculty. Students can submit their assignments anytime before 11.59 p.m. on the due date. We chose My Math Lab homework, quiz, quiz, and test system for dynamic flexibility in student support, videos, animation, step-by-step -step worked out solutions through Help Me Solve This and Show Me an Example, and it can be customizable for each professor. The entire digital multimedia textbook comes with My Math Lab Access. The study and progress assessment, called Newton, is intuitive and knows where you're stuck and can help you succeed. You can get a personalized study plan that diagnoses where you need to practice. Committed to accessibility for our students, My Math Lab has closed caption videos and is compatible with JAWS 12 screen reader software, enabling print disabled students to read selected multiple choice and free response problem types and interact with them via keyboard controls and math notation input. This semester, we're going to use Course Compass or My Math Lab. They're the same. So you type in the URL www.coursecompass.com or www.mymathlab.com or www.pearsonmylab.com. Either one will work, so if one of them doesn't work, when you log in, use another one. And if your browser doesn't work, just change the browser. Okay, so now you need to have, in order to start, you need to have an email address, a course ID, and an access code. You have an email address from your college or you can use a personal e email address. You get your course ID from your instructor. What that does is it links the assignments that your, your instructor has created to your account so that when you do your assignments, they cross over and then the instructor can facilitate and assist you with your questions. So, and then you need an access code. To get an access code, you buy a textbook that comes with an access code. If you buy a textbook that does not have, a, have an access code with it, you're going to have to pay another $90 to $100 extra. So buy a book with an access code, or you can just pay the $90 to $100, the, uh, pay for the access code, and it comes with the entire digital book in the site so that you will have your book with you all the time. So, so you do not need a hard copy of the book if you don't want one. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to go to register. No matter who you are, you're going to have to register as a student in this class. So we click students and it says you need to have an email address, you need to have, have a course ID, and you need to have an access code or a credit card. So now, course ID. My course is Winston 71615. That will be there. Continue. We go over here and you'll see that the course is here. Fall 2013, Intermediate Algebra, Winston 71615, and notice that I have the textbook date or the course ending date as out to 2014 so that you have access to the book for long afterwards. Now, if you already have a Pearson account, then you can log in here and you might have it from another course or you can create a new account. So we do that. I'm going to type in my email address, mathforfun at yahoo.com, and then um, a username. And so I'm going to choose a username. My first name is Rachel, and my last name is Winston. Security question, what town was I born in? And I was born in Dallas. So then I check to make sure that's OK. I accept the conditions, and I create an account. But click on this temporary access and say yes. So now what it's doing is it's creating your account. So we'll wait for a second um, as the account is being created. And then we'll go into the course. There'll be a link and the link will say, would you like to access your course? It says go to my course. I'll click that. And then I click on this link. 
And notice I have announcements, homework, quizzes and tests, study plan, grade book, and chapter contents. So here, the entire book, under chapter contents, the entire book is here. So if I want to log into the book or um, read the book, I'll, I click on chapter one, and let's say I want to go to section 1.1. And I want to view the textbook. So this is going to log into the multimedia textbook. Inside the textbook, you have uh, videos, animation, uh, show me an example. So it works out an example for you. And you can read the entire textbook on the screen. So now we can see that section 1.1 is loaded. I can scroll down. And you can see if I want um, six, seven, eight, nine, any chapter, and I want to expand it, notice that there's this arrow, and it'll expand it. And you can see all the sections in chapter eight. So let's say I want to go to 8.1 now. So 8.1 is loaded, and I can scroll down and notice that there's a video that explains how to do these types of questions. So that's nice. There are all kinds of help features within the book. So it's not just a static book, but there's a book with videos, animation, and uh, worked out problems for you. So we can keep on clicking these arrows. We can make it uh, zoom in or zoom out using these features here. And then um, we can read the textbook as we like. I'm going to go to the homework, though, because I want to show you how the homework works. So notice that there are deadlines. These are the deadlines. And most of these are past due. And you can see these are still open. So 10, 16, 20, 24, and so on. So I'm going to click on a homework assignment. And then click on a question. So actually, if I were to do this homework assignment, I would just start with question one and then go to question two, and so on. But let's just try this question. So notice over here there are these tools, help me solve this, show an, view an example, video, animation, textbook, connect to a tutor, ask my instructor, and print. So generally what I do is I'll use help me solve this if I'm just starting to work out the question, or view an example if I just want to see, like, how do they want the answer to look? Because sometimes Course Compass wants the answer in a certain way. So when you go to view an example, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you can see exactly how they want the answer to be. So I go over here and I um, want to factor this. And saying that you know how to factor, you go to uh, V minus 4 and V plus 6. And Notice that I lost the parentheses here, but let's say I didn't see that. So I check my answer, and it says, sorry, is not in the correct format. So I'm not going to get credit for this. In fact, if I don't see what the problem is, and I do this a couple of times, then it says, oh my gosh, I forgot this parentheses. Notice at the top that it says that you got the answer wrong. So but don't worry about that because you can always go down to similar exercise. This will give you another question to try. And so you go up here and you go to factor and you go, oh, I know this. Um, the variable is s, so make sure you have the right letter. So s plus 8 times s minus 3. And then we check the answer. And it says excellent. And now we go up here and notice the x is a check. So you can do these questions over as many times as you want until you get the right answer. It'll just take your wrong answers and make them right. So that's really a nice feature about Course Compass. It's better than if you had a teacher in a classroom that you turned in homework and you didn't really know whether you got the answers right or wrong or why you got them right or wrong. So here you have immediate feedback. As soon as you do the question, you know it got you got it wrong. And then you can get some help or you can work on it again um, or read the book to get more information. So we're going to save this assignment. And we're going to go back to homework. And we see that homework 3.3 is open. So we'll try that. And then we'll click on question number 8. 
When we click on question number eight, we'll notice that um, we're given a graph and we're given a palette, we're given help, and we're given a question. So it says graph this using the slope and y-intercept method. So again, you're going to get help to do this, but let's say you know that when x is 0, y is 5, and when y is 0, x is 3. So you go down here and you go when x is 0, y is 5, you click, and when y is 0, x is 3. But let's say I miss and I hit it here. So I check my answer and it says it's wrong. So now I don't want that. I need to clear that, that answer. Maybe I just can't see it in this small space. So I clear the answer and I go up here to this, this magnifying glass or you can go here to click the enlarge, enlarge click, click, to the enla click to enlarge the graph and you go over here and notice it says normal, medium, or maximize. You can actually make the graph much larger. But we're going to leave it here and we're going to click on the line tool again. There's the line and we're going to put the first point on. So when x is 0, y is 5. Click. When y is 0, x is 3. Click. And we're going to save it. So you have to push save and then you check your answer and it says nice work. So we got that question right. We're going to leave this and we're going to try another assignment so I can show you a different process. So now we scroll down to homework 5.1. And in homework 5.1, we're going to do question four. Question four is use the quotient rule to simpl simplify. Use the quotient rule to simplify. So you know that when you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. So 9 minus 6 is 3. So I go 2. And notice over here I have a power key. So I can use the power key and I can put 3. Now if you don't want to use the power key over here in this palette, then what I usually do is 2. And then I go shift and I use the caret key and then I put 3. I check my answer and it says nice work. And I get a check. Great. Let's try another one. Here it says c to the negative fifth, c to the seventh, and c to the negative eighth. So we know the rule. It says when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So we have negative 5 plus 7, which is 2, and 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So we get c to the negative 6 power. And we check our answer and it says, ah, oh, darn, I, I remember, simplify your answer. So you have to read this carefully because if you don't put it in the right form, you will not get the right answer. So simplify your answer, type your answer using exponential notation. Use positive exponents only. I can also go over here, view an example, and I continue, continue, continue. And notice, oh, positive exponents. I'm going to have to drop that in the denominator. So let's check. So instead of c to the negative 6, I'm going to rewrite this as uh, here's the fraction key so 1 over c to the sixth power and again I can use this exponent key now I don't usually do that because I don't use the palette but notice if you hover over here it says control shift plus um, I just use uh, shift with the caret key and if you want to get the fraction you can use the forward slash key and you go 1 over c to the 6th power. Check your answer. And it says, well done. And we'll save. You submit that quiz. So now notice that there's study plan. These are good exercises and they're very helpful. I don't require them in my classes, but some of the teachers might. So check with your instructor to see if you're required to have that. And here's the grade book. So that's an overview of Course Compass or My Math Lab. We are committed to your success. If you have any questions about using the website or inputting an answer, please contact your instructor.